We're going live, Chad. Hey, here we are. What's up, TFWR? Once again, uh, we're here with uh, another amazing Florida coach, Florida wrestler, uh, Chaz Jimenez of Key West High School. Uh, first, before I get into anything else, how are you, Coach Jimenez? Um, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know it's been a, a tough off season so far. Um, first of all, uh, talk a little bit about what you've been doing down there and what the pandemic has kind of affected and, and what you have your kids doing, whether it's virtual or anything of that nature. And um, again, I know you've been down there 11 years, 11 straight district titles, four time regional runner ups and 195 career dual wins. So congratulations to, to uh, I mean, I tell people Key, Key West is the biggest small town you'll ever be a part of because it's such a a family knit thing I know because of my dad so um thank you for coming on uh talk about what's been going on your your season and everything thanks for having me on Dan uh yeah we had a pretty you know we had a good season um you know as far as the it's been rough you know this is everyone's going through the same thing this this spring the springtime is when we really get a lot of wrestling in um especially with our football players before they got to go because I have a lot of kids that play football um, that before they get into, you know, the, the, the fall stuff, we got to try to get as much stuff in spring. And that's when we, you know, we're transitioning to freestyle and Greco. And we, I love freestyle and Greco. I love that time of year. And it just is just a fresh breath of air and we get so much done and, and we haven't been able to do it. You know, it's, it's, it's been rough. And, and then you just miss seeing the kids, you know, it's just, you just miss being around the kids and I miss rolling around myself. You know, I just want to be in that room and, and wrestle. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a rough transition. We're trying to get stuff going now. I've had the kids doing some stuff at home and just trying to do any activities they can. You know, so, hey, going are you having have them on some of these? Um, whoa, was that me or you? Sorry. <laughs> Something uh, when I was talking, it sounded like uh, somebody flushed the toilet in my ear. I apologize. Uh, might have been my headphones. Um, do you have them looking at some of these cool platforms? I mean, I've noticed that the wrestling community all around the country has has done some amazing things, especially Connor Beebe. I see him. He's on every day doing uh, some virtual stuff. Do, do you have them um, linked into some of that? I told them to check it out. I mean, I have, um, to be honest, I've been inundated with um, virtual school myself. Um, so I've been trying to do that. We, we just started. We have a, a guy down here that um, – Nash well, helps us out. He was a um, Uzbekistan national, Greco national team coach. He's been great. He was great for our, our kids this year. His name's for Cop Isayev. So he's he's doing stuff now, kind of on his own. And some of the guys are doing stuff with him out in the park, keeping the social distancing, CrossFit stuff. Since right now we can't do anything with the school, you know, school related, um, even you know, using any facilities. Uh, I could probably get in trouble just being around them <laughs> as of right now. So. We're, we're trying to do some stuff clandestine. But yeah, I, I've told them to go on, on some of those different platforms and look, but it's just been um, been tough, you know, but we're lucky down here. I mean, we still got, you know, it's beautiful. We still got the water. Um, we've been on the boat a lot. You know, my, my other passion in life is is, is spearfishing and, and boating. It's amazing. So that's good. Have they opened up the, um, the roadblocks yet? No. No, we're still we're still closed off. Uh, if you don't have a, a permission to be in here from, you know, you don't have a, a residential card or a license, or you don't have a passing or working out here, you can't get in the keys. Um, hey, listen, actually, it's, it's, even though it's one road, sorry, even though it's one road, uh, it's still a real small town. So all you got to do is get one guy, one person infected down there, and it's gonna, it'll it'll spread like wildfire. So it's kind of good that. Um, uh, down there is keeping protected. I know um, I've read some stuff where they tried to open it up at one point, but the the politicians down there said, no, wait a second, we need to protect our people. So that's good. I, I mean, I totally can tell you're, you're 100% keys, man. You're so chill, laid back, just like South Florida fishermen, man. You just, it's, yeah. it's good to talk to you, man. So, uh, so talk about that. You got your 11th straight district title. Um, so I, I'm guessing... I'm guessing what um, are you in the same class as and forgive my ignorance. I told you my knowledge of wrestling is this small. I mean, it was like this much when I started this, but now I'm like here. 
So, <laughs> so I'm getting there. What are you in three A or two A? Or one A actually. So you're in one A. Yeah, yeah. We're one of the biggest schools in one A, but we're one A. Yeah. Oh, how did I not know that? My son is one A. My son is at the first academy, a small school up here. We had our first state placer this year. Yeah. Um, but that's awesome. Yeah, and I yeah I should know that. I saw your heavyweight wrestling on the first mat. Uh, that's what I texted you about, right? I was watching him. It's yeah. weird. I always feel like rooting for Key West because of my dad. You know, he lives down there. So yeah. um, special place in my heart. Him too. I like him kind of a little bit too, but I do like the kid. <laughs> so, uh, so your 11 straight district title. So, um, who uh, who did you who do you keep uh, coming up a little short on the regional side against? Our region's tough. Um, it's gotten really. It's always been tough. But it's gotten really tough in the last couple of years. Um, you know, our re we're region four one a. So I have uh, yeah, traditional power. You know, Gibbons. Arnold Gibbons, Somerset Academy. Now we got American Heritage Del Rey. This year, Jensen Beach came back into our region. Uh, I think that's only going to be better for you to get better, right? I mean, you got these oh, yeah. kids and, wrestling. And Matter, Matter Lakes has become really tough in the last year. I mean, so it's always been a tough region. Um, and we were, we fell short to – every time we were running up, we were running up to Gibbons three times and then – my first year as head coach, we were runner up to Archbishop McCarthy when Coach Bertoloni was there. Um, yeah, now it's um, it's not him anymore. It's another guy. I think I have him coming on. Charlie. Um, huh? Charlie's the head coach at McCarthy. Yeah, that's him. You see how much I know? I, I'm, I have to look at my, my schedule to see who's coming on. But I, I, I heard you say Gibbons, and I have Ralph Cater um, signed up. And uh, and Morgan, so those are all your guys, right? Charlie Morgan, Ralph Cater. Yeah, well, yeah well, um, Charlie's and Archbishop McCarthy's two way now. Uh, okay, they left, and then but we're, the yeah, buddies at all. Jamel, Jamel Morris, right? He's the head coach at Gibbons, right? And now then Carter's yeah. the assistant. Yeah, I got both them coming on. I don't know when. I got to look here. Oh, Cater's on today. <laughs> you no, know, tomorrow. I'm sorry. Tell him, tell him the Okay, I've only got the amazing Cassie Menez today. Yeah, I want a Key West wrestling shirt. I'd wear it proud. I have to get you one. Yeah, everyone wa wants our shirts. They're, um, pretty, they're popular. Yeah, I got to tell. Like, uh, like the, the conch shell on it. So, um, I mean, obviously you love the keys. I know you and I were messaging with each other when I finally got to meet you through text message and I mean, this is home. So you were the first actual individual wrestler when you were in school to to get to the finals for uh, for Key West, right? I mean, that's got to be a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was on the first team, like I was telling you, when we started the program, um, and I was the first state finalist. And actually that year, my assistant coach, who's my best friend, was my partner, um, he he took fourth that we had my our in our second year we had three state placers, um, we had a we got kind of off to a good start real fast and um, we had a just finalist after year after year we had placers and it's kind of been like that ever since, um, and yeah we I was the first state finalist and we probably should have had three finalists that year it was uh, my 189 Justin Duck who was a three time state placer he. Um, Pedro Lara, who is my, my 215, who's my best friend, who's my assistant coach, he took fourth. They both took fourth, and I took um, second when I got hurt in the finals. But we had a we had a nice little crew then. And, and, uh, but, yeah, it was, I've been a part of the program since its inception. So it's, That's it's amazing. Hard. I mean, how many people can, um, can say that about their program? I mean, I know I, I spoke to um, Coach George yesterday, and he wrestled for the school that he coaches at now. And um, – um, it's got to be pretty special to grow a program from from being the wrestler there to the coach to now. I mean, everybody knows who Key West Wrestling is. Who, they know Conk Wrestling. Uh, you're doing a great job down there. Um, talk about um, uh, just talk about that feel. I mean, the kids down there, the 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 kind of camaraderie you get in the Florida Keys, and and how they come together. 
uh, I'm sure you get a great following with your sports and stuff because, uh, like I said, it's just it's a small town. Yeah, so Key West itself, we have a, a rich tradition of, of athletics, um, and people are always surprised if they're not from South Florida that they or Florida they don't realize it. But if you're from Florida, you've been around, you know, and you've been in sports that we we have a pretty rich tradition in athletics. We have some really good athletes that come out of Key West, professional athletes, college athletes. Um, it's kind of amazing, but yeah, we definitely have always had tough kids. Um, it's kind of rooted into the island mentality that we, we you have to be strong, we, you know, forever. For like a lot of kids that go to Cuba's high school that wrestle for me are, are kids like me that their families have been here for generations. So it's kind of rooted in us that we we have that really family mentality that we have to ha use each other and stick together to survive. And that we always have each other's backs no matter what. And that we're always, everything is, this, this, the deck's always stacked against us. And that's something we always have a chip on our shoulder because what we do, you know, we, everything that we do is more difficult than anyone else has to do. And for us to be at, compete at the high level, we try to compete at every year. It's, everything's harder. For us to go to a weekend, you know, we go to weekend tournaments a couple times a month throughout the whole year. So you're talking about we're going to get a tournament. The, the closest we can go is South Dade, right, in Homestead. So, and they and, and and they're yeah and they're pretty bad so you probably don't get much competition there right? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but just saying, just to get a weekend tournament to get matches in in the spring or the summer or fall or something, you know, off season tournament, not a regular season tournament, just a weekend get club tournament. We're talking about that's minimum three hours just to get up there. So we're waking up at five in the morning, going up, getting our few matches in and then driving back, you know, that's just for a regular club tournament. Uh, our regular high school season tournaments, we, re we wrestle all over the state. We go Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Orlando, West Coast. We go everywhere to see competition. And, you know, where our kids are missing two to two days a week sometimes, at least every Friday, we're traveling. We're, you know, away from our families every well, week. They're, 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 I don't know why I keep getting that loud echo in my ear i apologize i don't know what it is but um they'll be really good at um going to school virtually here so now when you travel they're going to know how to do that pretty well <laughs> yeah we travel i think um at, we average six thousand miles a year on the road well, how many That's high schools are how many high schools are down there that have wrestling are you the only one so there's only three schools in the keys um so the lower keys is key west high school Middle Keys is Marathon, and the Upper Keys, where your, your dad lives, up is is Coral Shores. Um, which one of those? Which one of those had? And it might have been you. I don't know. Um, he talked about a a heavyweight one year that was like almost undefeated, or was just all American, or or somebody that was, that was like that was Coral Shores. That was Dante a, Dante Giovanetta. Okay, yeah, I remember him He's, saying that he was a big deal down there for Keys wrestling. Well, he's, a, he's another kid that grew up in Florida wrestling. Um, he's originally from, you know, from Fort Lauderdale, but they, they his dad had lived in, in um, where they live? They live in Mat Matacumbi, the Upper Keys, and they moved down to Coral Shores, and he won two state titles. Do you guys have a club down there that, that is for all three high schools or wrestling on the island? Well, we have our club, but it's basically all my kids and our little kids and um, – we do it. We it's called Republic Wrestling Club, and then we also do it through our PAL, a Police Athletic League, give us PAL Wrestling. Um, they're kind of the same thing. They're all through me. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, awesome. So that's when people message me. I'm like, well, you know, if you want the all, pretty much all wrestling in Key West or the key lower keys is through me, and then upper keys they're starting to do stuff now. Um, my good friend Joe Biondoletti, who's the head coach of Core Shores, and Mark Terrell, they were both uh, D1 college wrestlers for big. Joe wrestled at Purdue and, and Mark wrestled at LSU. They're starting to build it back up up there. They face their a little bit different um, barriers than we do because um, it, it's it's a little more transient in the upper keys. Uh, but like I said, our, for us, it's it's distance and travel, and it's uh, it makes everything a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so, well, let's get all those coaches on, man. Let's uh, let's put a a spotlight on Keys Wrestling, man. I'm good with it. We can have them all on. Uh, all right, we'll definitely get Joe on. Yeah, talk about um, 
so how long have you had the Key West Invitational going on? Um, with, last year was our first year that we had it back as a big tournament. It, we hadn't had it as a big, big tournament for a while um, because it just got really difficult with hotels down here. That's the other thing that, you know, getting people down here. You know, that's why we travel so much too. And now everything is big two, two, two day tournaments, you know, big two day tournaments. Um, and then the hotels are so expensive here. We used to even, you know, even when I first started coaching, we used to get good deals for, for teams down here, but now it's because when's wrestling season, wrestling season is in the middle of tourist season, right. In the heart of tourist season. Um, and it's, we, you know, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll give you a hotel for $300. You know, that's our deal because normally it's $500. So we we really can't make it affordable for teams to come down here. So it's, it was last year was the first year we we decided, you know, let's be creative. People have been wanting to come down, back down forever. Um, so we had teams staying in the gym and we're going to do it again next year. So the, the kids stayed in the gym, almost like a camp out. Oh, like up in Ohio, right? Yeah, just like we do when we go to Jordan, you know, sleep on the mats. Um, the, the coaches, uh, we have a bunk room that we have for uh, for when teams do travel here, which has about 30 bunk beds in it, back by the wrestling room. <clears throat> so most of the coaches stayed there. Um, well, hey, I, I, think that, um, I think that I may know some people down there that can put some pressure on some hotels. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we need to... Um, we need to figure that out because um, let's grow that tournament. I mean, why would kids and coaches not want to come to the Keys for a weekend? I mean, that's such an attractive, that's such an attraction in itself. And then, like, I know high schools can't recruit, but damn, imagine being able to say, hey, move your family down to the Keys. We'll go fishing, spear fishing. We can, we got the ocean on all three sides, man. Uh, come on down and, and wrestle too. Um, you see all these Illinois coaches come on. I see Blaine Eisen on there now. Um, all talking about how, man, it's cold in Illinois, Pennsylvania. Come down here and wrestle down there. But yeah, Blaine's got uh, a hammer. How, Blaine comes down. Blaine and his crew come down because yeah. yeah. How, how can we do that? How can we how can we grow that pro that that tournament? And I mean, I'd have to talk to our coach. We have a small team. You know, we only had eight kids last year. Um, they were all younger kids except for one senior. So it's it's tough for. Um, a lot of these places to take us on just because we don't have a full squad. So they'd rather fill the holes with, with squads that are, are fully, uh, what, what is it? 14 weight classes or whatever. So yeah. um, it's tough for us, but yours is an individual tournament, right? It's, it's an individual uh, round Robin scramble. So it, it doesn't really matter if it's full team or not. Cause we could, if we could put, you know, more kids in, um, you know, we want to get kind of like 16 man brackets because we're going to do two, we do two eight man pools and then everyone wrestles the seven matches through those pools and then we wrestle the crossovers, uh, semis and finals from the pools. Um, so, I, you know, you're leaving with, depending on how many kids are in a weight class, leaving with seven to nine matches. And that's good because you don't want people traveling down there for two and out. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, you know, you, and you, you, that time of year you want to get matches and, Everyone wants the bang for the buck. So that's the other thing. They're spending the money to come down. And we got down early and had enough time for the coaches to hit the ball street. So, you know, it was a win-win. And we had a really, we had a really, <laughs> last year we had a really good time. I mean, we, we had some really so good how time. Many kids, um, how many kids did you have last year? In the tournament? Yes, sir. Um, well, we had, I think we had 12 or 13 teams. and Oh, nice. Pretty much. Everyone had a full squad, and we allowed for extras. I mean, it was a lot. Yeah, of do you let just a kid, like let's say, uh, uh, let's say there's a parent who has a wrestler up here in Florida, but the the whole team can't get down there, but the one parent wants to bring his son, or uh, do you allow that, or does it have to be a whole? Uh, the issue with that is we get into the FHSA stuff that if one kid comes to compete, then we have to count that against the, that team's weigh-ins. Okay. And stuff like that. Um, and that's why it's tough to get teams, right? Because I think when I was asking my my coach, why don't we do more things? He said, well, you can't just do what you want. You get a certain amount of points or something. And, yeah. and two, two is a duel. One is a tournament. Or, I, I don't know how it works. Yeah. You'd have to tell me. But he was explaining it to me. Uh, 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 
a, t- a regular tournament is going to be is two points basically. Um, now the good thing is that the state does give us an exemption um, to try to get people to come down for all of our sports. Um, that like if you came down for a regular like let's say baseball game, it wouldn't count against your points. So for us for a tournament, instead of it being two points, for when keep people do travel down, it only counts as one point to try to get. Oh, nice. The state's always had that deal with us to try to get um, to help us out with travel with because how much we travel and to try to get people to come down. So. so what would be, so you feel like if you had a hotel down there that would, would get a, get, get a rate to a certain number, you think you could attract more teams? Yeah. You know, we're almost maxed out right now as it is actually. Um, but we, we had a, after last year's tournament, we had a lot of interest. Um, and they, but it would just be beneficial to have a hotel that would be willing to do it. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm pretty well connected, like I said, and and it's been hard because it's just there's too much money to be lost that time of year, in right now with hotels. Now after this, all this happened, who knows? Um, but you know, there, there's those hotels are booked and they're three to five hundred dollars a night. Oh, you and, might have plenty of room now after this, yeah. huh? Yeah. Ask Ask Goo Goo got every time Goo comes down, he hits me up. What deals can you get? Because I always get them deals, <laughs> always get them deals on rooms, and I'm like, tell them to sleep like, on the boat. <laughs> I was like, Goog, man, it's getting harder and harder. But yeah, that actually, um, Strawberry Crest, they uh, when they they came down this last year, they stayed on a, um, a houseboat. They rented out a houseboat through an Airbnb or something at Arena. Oh, how like, cool is that? A couple different houseboats. They they came down on a limo and everything. They, their kids loved it. But yeah, we, but the kids actually, for the most part, all from all the coaches I talked to. The teams like loved staying in the gym. They they thought it was a they had a blast. That's and, you know, fun. It you, you know, barbecue stuff. and stuff for them. Yeah. Throw, throw up a grill, barbecue some fish, right? Yeah. They, they, I mean, everyone had a great time. So. Oh, so good for you, good man. Next year. Uh, so so I know we were talking about your uh, your season. Uh, Would you guys end up? Um, or our place, or we finished at states. Well, yeah, no, I mean uh, your record. Oh, uh, our dual record. I think this past year we were maybe was was we were like fifteen and six or something like that. Or right. Seventeen and six. It wasn't. And it wasn't was 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 your heavyweight the only one in the finals this year, or how how far did uh, some of your guys get? We had our four upper weights were all really tough. We had uh our our. 82 Craig Sliman and our 95 Ricardo Kamein and our 220 Max Ryan they all lost pretty close matches in the blood round at uh at states to match the place I I thought we were gonna have four four placers um and they were all right there um I think Ricardo actually had a real controversial match with with uh where I felt like he scored a takedown at the end against um, Miranda from Somerset but that was, but that was, that was a great match for his career because Miranda had majored him or pinned him every time. So that's game- the 195 kid, right? Yeah, we and we game planned big time, and that was in the blood round match, and we, and um, we just game planned, and he wrestled to that game plan, and we ended up losing uh, one nothing, and I felt that we got a, you know, we got a, got had a real bang bang cl- call that we didn't get. Um, on the last second takedown, but that's oh. you, know, you always that's say the kid, that's the kid that tried to bully the Lake Highland Prep kid and then got beat right at the last second, and uh, the crowd went nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's that a great was, kid. Uh, Danny, Danny's a great kid. Um, but it was just good for my, you know, my kid was had been beaten by him so many times, fit, you know, and pinned or majored, and he wrestled him. That's why I always tell kids when you get to the regional tournament, the state tournament. Whatever's happened in the season or in the past is out the window. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I noticed, that, you know, my son had never advanced to regionals before until this year, right? And it's not like he's been wrestling long, right? A couple of years. And um, <clears throat> I would always drop him off at the regional tournament the last, you know, two years prior to this year. So I wouldn't sit there and watch because I'm like, I'm, my kid's not wrestling, but he'd want to be with his teammates. Um, I never realized how tough it is to get to states through the regional tournament. Cause sure. If, if you're the guy that's the top blue chipper, yeah, you wrestle three matches, you're done. Right. Whatever. But when you get moved to the, to the, uh, Concy side, I mean, you've got to, 
damn near get seven, eight matches in to get back into this thing. And I, I couldn't believe how many matches you, I was like, wow, no wonder people are, are so crazy about this thing. It was the emotion, especially getting to watch the blood round, the round that decides whether you go or not and watching the emotions of these kids is, I mean, you're like in tears for some of these kids. You don't even know them. You're just so happy that to see the emotions come out of these kids. It's crazy. Yeah, the blood round is brutal. It's 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 such an emotional roller coaster, and it goes from match to match. You you'll have a match where a kid just has a huge surprise. A kid that you didn't think was going to place wins, and you're you know it's complete you know just excitement and going crazy, and then. The next match is maybe a senior who is a, a returning qualifier or placer, and you think he's going to get it, and then he loses a close match, and that kid's career is over. And it's just, and then you have another match after that. It's just after that 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 session's over, and we go to the break usually for the finals. I just have to go lay down. So like it's just emotionally draining that blood round. It's the same thing at the state tournament. We had um, like this year, Patrick wins, you know, or heavyweight wins his semis. Pins, pins a kid in the semifinals. We're going crazy, just like complete joy. And then we get into the blood round and we have back to back to back heartbreak losses. And, oh, man. And but talk a little bit about South Florida wrestling. I mean, you've been a wrestler there since you were whatever age. And then, so you, you wrestled at school. How far have you seen South Florida wrestling come from, from you being a ninth grade wrestler to where you have a team now that is competitive every year? and a state that looks like, you know, our top can compete na nationally now. Not just South Florida wrestling, but Florida wrestling in general. You know, like I said, I've been traveling and doing it since I was uh, ninth grade. Um, it's just come along. It's just come so far. Um, it is wrestling in Florida has just gotten to another level. Um, it's just, it's been a joy to watch it grow. And it's taken, you know, big programs that push the push the, the pace that people had to, you know, you wanted to compete, you had to start doing what they were doing or at least following that, that, that model. Um, and that's, what's really gotten us to that next level. And the, you know, the, the, the competition, and we, we could still do better. We could still do better at different, you know, at our, our, you know, with our state organizations, um, our club organizations, we have still have kind of like a civil war going on between USA wrestling and, AAU and or your USA Wrestling Club or AAU Club, or you're going to wrestle folk style all year round or freestyle or go freestyle and Greco. There's still kind of like that split. Um, you know, some state state club associations like Georgia are doing a great job of getting everyone together. And, and but we're starting to get better. It's gotten better um, since, we, since we kind of had a change in regimes there. But just overall, Florida wrestling has just grown exponentially it's just uh, how important how important will it be to get girls sanctioned i think it's going to be really important um i think just in, in for nationally and, and for wrestling in general it's going to take the sports the next thing that's going to take our sports at the next level um, i mean you'd, you'd love to you'd love to field a, a girls squad down there wouldn't you yeah but there's just i think just like with anyone else for me especially there's there's some logistical issues that come up with it. And I was on the, you know, I was on the um, advisory board for a long time with the FHSA for the, the wrestling advisory committee. And when, when it came up a few years ago, you know, the big issue was how do we address this logistically for like big programs and can, can deal with it. Um, especially they, they, you got to find room or you know practice together. You're going to practice separately. Like not everyone has a wrestling room or if they do have a wrestling room, is it big enough to hold that many people? You know, I have a good sized room, but in the beginning of the season, when I have 40, 50 kids in that room, it's pretty hard to have that, you know, to have that many people in there. So now if we add 20 or 30 girls, do we have to have separate practices, A and B days? Is, should, is it, should it be the same time of year? You know, should it be the same season? Should it be a, like a spring season? Um, those are all kinds of things that are going to be tough with it. But in general, it, it does need to happen. So for us, it's going to be really tough for I would have because of the travel scenario. So uh, talk about the old like Florida regime of wrestling that that has been around a long time, like uh, yourself, the, the the duck and B and Husk and 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 who is it Wilkes and Held and Goog and that that kind of 
those kind of guys that have grown Florida wrestling from the beginning, how important have they been and yourself been to, to grow in this sport and just to the kids and, and getting them in the rooms? Oh, it's huge. We have, we have so many great coaches in, in, in Florida and, um, and people that really, especially like when I was, when I was growing up, USA wrestling was really strong and we had, um, there was a lot of, of, people involved that pushed uh, Florida wrestling to the next level and the national trips that were going on back then. And, but yeah, we just have, we have a lot of legendary coaches. I don't even put myself in that old school. <laughs> I <don't know> where <laughs> guys, I mean, now I guess I'm getting up there, but um, you know, we've. Um, like what, what is your opinion on the, um, what is your opinion on the travel restrictions? Are you somebody that believes we need to get out of state sometimes to, to kind of, build our kids up and get them a little different uh, looks or are you okay with having to be restricted to stay home? Um, I'm all about travel. So <laughs> you know, I think if you want to go to national tournaments, go, go to national tournaments. If you want to go to tournaments in other States, you need to go, you know, go to tournaments in other States. I mean, our, our club stuff, our off season stuff, you know, two people are going all over the country. So I don't see why, you know, you can't do a couple trips if, if you can afford it. And your kids' parent, your parents allow you to, to for the kids to miss the time. I don't see a problem with it. I, mean, I think it just builds the sport, builds uh, competition. But again, you kind of get into the haves and the have-nots, um, right. and disparity, which happens, you know. And like I said, we we got we got to fight an uphill battle all the time because I I got it's a, I got kind of a dichotomy. Like, yeah, I develop kids, we develop kids, and but for the most part they're going to stay here unless they move for whatever reason. They're not, yeah, the key, they're not, they're not the key, the key, the Yeah. The, the key seems to, uh, the key seems to keep people there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's that type of place. But I'm uh, not gonna, what I'm saying is I'm not going to develop them and then they get really good. And then they transfer to another school, like, which is what happens in the mainland a lot. You know, kids are the free agency that's happened in, in high school sports now. Um, and it's been happening in wrestling for a while, but also, I only have this small group of kids to work with at the same time. So I'm not pulling kids from a tri-county area or a I-4 corridor or, you know, a metropolitan area with millions of people. So, and then again, we, it's, so that's the kind of the uphill battle when you're wrestling teams and programs that have the ability for a, a stud state place to move, you know, to, to come to their school that the next year or to have four move-ins next year. You know, that's, yeah, that's it's, it's, cr it's crazy to me to think that for you to go from Key West to uh, the state champ camp, it takes as long for me to go from here to Miami. <laughs> yeah. It blows my mind how long the keys are. And I, I know sometimes I talk to my dad, he, he travels. I mean, he'll have to wake up in the morning some days and drive down to Key West and drive back up to Tavernier and do all that. Well, man, hey, it's been uh, it's been awesome, man. Uh, I'm so happy I got a chance to talk with you and 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 just kind of um, get wrestling on here. I mean, anybody down there that you think could could help grow the sport and um, and can get uh, the keys known. Uh, Andrew says that you've lost. Uh, Goog says, Chaz, discuss Chaz's weight loss. I don't know what that means. Did you lose weight? Uh, yeah, I lost it uh, a, few, a few years ago. I lost about 200 pounds. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I think I gained about 80 of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's Ricky, gotta be, uh, we, Ricky had had bariatric surgery a couple a few years ago, and then Ricky um, Marcus, I was one of the people that kind of inspired Ricky to kind of get on that thing, and we talked about it a lot. Uh, oh, Ricky, did he have he had surgery as well? Yeah, he's like he's lost all the weight, looking good. So yeah, but that's the thing. I always it's funny was when I was really really big, I had really good lightweights and small guys. And <laughs> people would always ask the kids, Who, "Who's showing you the? You know, who's sh showing you that stuff?" And they'd be like, oh, "Coach Chaz is," and people would be like, "What?" And then <laughs> then uh, I lost a bunch of weight, and now I've gotten my big guys have gotten really good. So it's kind of a, fun, a funny. They're all still big, but it was funny when. I, got, I lost all that weight. Now my upper weights have been good the last few years. 
Oh uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I watched uh, I watched the big guy go at it a little bit, and, and he looked like he was up there for the first two rounds, and then you could just kind of see his energy kind of deplete a little bit there in the final round, and he got looked like he got caught there. But that happens. You watch all those heavyweights, man. They just they look like once you get into the third round, they're like oh. <laughs> anywhere. Well, you're a really good, really in shape heavyweight. I always tell my heavyweights that you're going to win a lot of matches just by being in really good shape. That's how, that's how I won a lot. I mean, I was, I had really good stamina as a big guy. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I watched Matt Kaplan in 1A, the 220 or whatever he is, and he looks like ripped out of a wall and he just smokes people that once they get tired, you know, keeps himself in good shape. Hey, so um, you ready for the 10 questions? Sure. So you're down by three going into the third period. You have choice. Are you going top, bottom, or neutral? I personally would go bottom. Do you prefer folk style or freestyle? Uh, both. Uh, it's, <laughs> to me, I consider them like two different sports, different seasons. I love – I love going from folk style into freestyle and Greco and having that like fresh breath of air, but they're both, they're both, you know, I both love them for what they are. You prefer headgear or no headgear? I personally hate wearing headgear. Um, <laughs> well, you have one day to train, whether it's you or it's your team, you can answer it as a coach or as a wrestler. Uh, do you decide to go to a rumble or a clinic? I think a rumble. You got to get matches in. Uh, who wins the rematch, Loudon Swain or Brian Sheet? <laughs> He's probably going to win because he got caught with that lat drop. You don't get caught with the lat drop twice in a row. No. <laughs> Actually, the uh, hip toss. Yeah, I think at 12 years old you do. <laughs> yeah. uh, which title holds more prestige, the 32 or the Fargo? I think today, I mean, if you win Super 32s, you, you put yourself kind of at another level. But, I mean, still winning Fargo is a huge deal. But it's just Super 32s, I think, has gotten tougher than Fargo. What's more dominant, a pin or a tech? A tech, for sure. A tech. <laughs> Steve Hall's screaming right now. See, it's a tech. If he's I mean, you want pins, but uh, <laughs> if you text someone, you really man, you really manhandle them. So I mean, I, I know you're down in the keys. I'll, I'll ask this one: You prefer a wings or a burger? Wings. But then down there, it's like, do you prefer grouper or mahi mahi? Oh, you can't compare grouper and mahi. Mahi's not even close to grouper. <laughs> uh, black grouper wins that all day. I think you'd have to say grouper or hogfish. That would be like a more of a Hogfish. That's the white flaky fish, right? Yeah, that's more of a comparable question. I think I got the hogfish up at the fish house up in the upper keys. Yeah. It was really good. And then uh what else you had down there? So I know like the lobster rubens are big down there, right? Those are good. Yeah, that's more yeah, that one place, uh key, the keys, they have lobster rubens and we just I mean for us in Key West it's just any sea you know, seafood that you any. Eat, fresh fish, conch salad. Uh, you, you prefer like uh, you prefer like the the fried fish or like the coconut shrimp? Um, fried fish, but see, like I fish so much and 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 spear fish so much that I usually don't order fish at a restaurant. You make it yourself. Well, you guys down there, like even my dad tells me, he goes, "You you can go out and then walk across the street and they'll cook the fish for you." Yeah, you could you could take your. Um, your, your your catch with you to the marina and, or the restaurant, they'll cook at your catch and stuff like that. That's pretty cool because, you know, sometimes you're down there or maybe you just got done with your Key West Invitational and you have no desire to be over a grill <laughs> to bring your fish into the restaurant and get it cooked up for you. I'm sure you know a lot of those restaurant owners down there. What is the key, what's, what's Key West looking like these days? I know they've opened up. I mean, I've seen, I saw that one restaurant that kind of got in trouble for, for opening up to full capacity, but I saw that on the on the news feed. But is, are people starting to get back out and about and sitting on the streets and um, kind of little by little, is life starting to get back to normal? Um, 
no, because it's, well, this I we I mean as a as a con being from here, we're actually it's been nice. It reminds me of my childhood of not having this place packed. Um, but no, it's it's really slow because yeah, the majority of the people that when we see it's filled, it's filled with tourists. Um, so there, you know, there's some people starting to get out. There's some restaurants starting to open here, you know. The, but I mean, tourism is what drives this economy down here in this industry. So um, it's really dead still, but it's nice. But it's it's also people are hurting. I mean, I know how you feel. I I grew up on uh, on old Miami Beach, right? and then into the start of Ocean Drive, you know, when when it was just like mangoes and the Clevelander and the Edis stuff like that, Penrod, and it was it was a cool little strip, nice and quiet. Now it's become like an eighth wonder of the world. And yeah. you go down there, it's slamming. I know they're trying to get, uh, I saw, I saw where they're trying to get them to, I guess, close off ocean drive and let the restaurants put kind of chairs and tables out there just to get these restaurants kind of bringing money back into the economy again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's starting. It's but man, we're going to, it's going to be, a long road for everyone then you know most that's what i'm worried about you know how many of our kids are going to be are going to have to move you know it's not like because their parents can't survive down here right now those are the concerns that um are, are going through my head and i'm you know i'm one of the people i'm lucky i'm paid you know i'm here at school right now you know but most of the people that work that live down here are in the service industry at some level so it's it's really tough yeah, I mean, obviously, you know who my dad is, so I, I hear a lot of stuff, and um, and I know even it, on social media, I see him out with giving out food and giving out groceries and, and feeding everybody every day and being at the lodges. So I know that, um, you know, I think a lot of people have this, this uh, the wrong the wrong perception that you got to be a millionaire to live in the Keys. I mean, most of the Keys is just the working class and... Uh, it's good to have people like you and, and my dad and coaches and people down there that are, that are out there trying to make sure these kids and families have, have food. So it's good to see, man. And I, uh, I appreciate you for it. And um, let's do this anytime. And I hope, uh, I hope I get back down there again when this opens back up and uh, I get to meet you. Oh yeah. I'd love to meet you. Take you on the boat. Go shoot some fish. Yeah, my kids, um, they love it. I, I get a little seasick, so I've always had an issue with that. Um, but <laughs> but the kids will go out and they'll have a blast. So I know my dad had a uh, a fishing, uh, somebody take them out, and and it was really rough that day, at least for me. So I was like, I, I'll stay home. You guys can go fishing. I don't want to ruin it for my kids. but uh, Yeah, but uh, definitely I appreciate it, man. I'll bring them down and, and we'll have a good time. I always get guys come down. Dude comes down, uh, like wrestling coaches and, and Mason, David Mason from Jesuits, one of my best friends. Uh, we used to coach with Goog. He comes down a couple times a year and we go out. He pretends like he's going to shoot fish, but I just shoot all the fish and he eats it all. Um, <laughs> PJ, PJ Colbert, if you're listening, PJ's been begging me to come down. Hey, Goog, Goog is. Uh... Goog is asking, hey, come on, I'm in line. I want to come down. Now Alan Held is is on here. Alan gets seasick uh, too. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> Alan I just needs to eat it. <laughs> I get it bad, man. I I wish I could do it, but I know my kids love it. So I was I didn't want to ruin it for them. I let my dad take them out. It was fun. Hey man, I appreciate you, my brother, and um uh keep doing what you're doing, man. And I, I'm glad that I, I created this platform and uh, if you want to come on every day, every week, every month, whatever, just reach out, man. We'll, we'll shoot the bull. I'd love to be on again. Yes, sir. Hey, you know how to get a hold of me now. For sure. <laughs> hey, tell, all right, your, probably, tell your dad the, I'm going to want to be on his good side, all right? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell him to take take good care of you, look out for you. And, I, and maybe put some pressure on those hotels down there to get you some better rates. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, man, you take it easy. All right, thanks. Yes, sir.